Welcome to the eighth lecture of the fourth iteration of the Plutus Pioneer program. In this lecture, I want to talk about staking and how it relates to Plutus. So in particular, in the previous lectures, we have talked about the script purpose of Plutus scripts, and we have concentrated on two purposes, the most common purposes, spending, which is responsible for unlocking a script UTXO and minting, which is used when you mint or burn a Cardano native token that has a Pluto script as its minting policy. So there are these other two that I briefly mentioned when we first talked about the script purpose. And I want to talk about this one rewarding in this lecture. So how can you use Plutus to somehow restrict or influence under which circumstances staking rewards can be withdrawn. Talking about staking has only become possible really after the Alonso hard fork, when Plutus was actually deployed to Cardano, to the mainnet and the test nets. Before, we only had the playground and the emulator, and those didn't support staking. So even though Plutus always in principle supported it, it was not really possible to try it out. But even after Alonso, if you, for example, want to play with staking on the test net, you have the problem that things take long. The rhythm of staking depends on the so-called epoch, which is five days. So if you want to try things out, you normally would have to wait for at least five days or even longer, depending on what you want to do. And that, of course, is not a lot of fun and certainly not suitable for a lecture. There is luckily an alternative, namely to spin up a private test net. Because in a private test net, you have full control over the parameters and you can make slot length or epochs much shorter so that it becomes feasible to play around with staking in a reasonable amount of time. And that's what we're going to do. So the first thing I show you is how to access the private test net that we are using for this lecture.